Tornado recovery and flooding fears updates on Missouri and Oklahoma storms. Video by Associated Press A storm system will carve a path from Texas to the Great Lakes today. Jefferson City, MOU much of the central United States, braced Friday for another day of nasty storms, raging floodwaters and the potential for powerful tornadoes as residents across the region nervously watched river levels rise. The severe weather will race from Texas to the Great Lakes region on Friday, bringing with it fierce winds, hail, and potentially more tornadoes in a region that has found itself fighting multiple crises through a waterlogged, miserable spring. Three people died, Jefferson City, MO, which was hit by a separate tornado on Wednesday, is now under threat of widespread flooding from the Missouri River. The river is expected and in Tulsa, Oklahoma, the Army Corps of Engineers continued to release water at a dam northwest of the city to help drain the Arkansas River watershed, which has been deluged by the series of pounding storms in recent months. The river is rising in Jefferson City, days after a tornado swept through. Jefferson City has been the site of dueling crises this week. As local official, on Friday, near downtown and the state capitol building, the river was swollen, fierce, and hours away from cresting. Nearby, a few parking lots were filling with brownish water. Streets had been because of the tornado on Wednesday, most state employees in Jefferson City had been told to stay home the rest of the week. The downtown had working near the river requires negotiations. When it floods, we just work around it you you have to, said Brandon Owens, a body piercer who was on his way to his tattoo shop. It looks really high, slideshow by photo services. As many as 1,000 homes may have been damaged by flooding in Oklahoma. Residents and officials in the Tulsa area of Oklahoma continued to nervously watch the swollen Arkansas River on Friday morning, after water releases from the Keystone Dam spread fears of widespread flooding. The Army Corps of Engineers has been releasing water from the dam into the Arkansas River at a rate of 250,000 cubic feet per second, a flow it will continue through Sunday, after a week of heavy rainfall in eastern Oklahoma. We're not going to know the full impact of this until probably next week, until the waters start receding a little bit more, government. Kevin Stitt of Oak, many residents who live near the river have voluntarily evacuated, turning some communities into virtual ghost towns. Power was disconnected in Sand Springs, a Tulsa suburb on the Arkansas River with a population of 20,000, dozens of homes and streets in a low-lying area were submerged in several feet of water, with floodwaters rising nearly to the roofline of some homes. The city, about 8 miles west of downtown Tulsa and the closest to the Keystone Dam, has been one of the hardest hit communities from this week's flooding. In published by the early Friday afternoon, in a riverfront community called Candlestick Beach, houses were dry you for now. Neighbors stood in the street nearby, about two blocks from the river, Christopher Barrett had a U-Haul truck packed with his belongings ready to go. His father-in-law, we don't plan to leave at this point, but if they say we have to, then we will, Mr. Barrett said. For local officials, the main concern was the state of the earthen levee system that is decades old. So far, the levee system has performed well, the mayor of Sand Springs, Jim Spoon, said in a statement. Our community is at more lousy weather is on the way. Forecasts for the next 24 hours predict another bout of severe weather for a vast area, beginning in Texas and Oklahoma and moving north all the way into Illinois and southern Michigan, said Bill Bunting, chief of forecast operations for the In addition to receiving as much as 5 inches of rain, some places will be whacked by winds of at least 60 miles per hour and hail that may be as large as an inch in diameter. Much of that area has seen more severe weather for more days than I can count, Mr. Bunting said. Because hundreds of rivers in the central part of the nation are already above the flood stage level, the predicted rain will most likely cause even more severe flooding, Mr. Bunting said. 
no one died in the Jefferson City tornado. The mayor says that the winds of the storm that roared through the Missouri capital on Wednesday night reached 160 miles per hour. The damage left be yet in a city of 40,000, only 25 people were injured and no one was killed, a fact that Carrie Turgeon, the mayor of Jefferson City, attributes to obedience and luck. It was preparedness and paying attention and timing, she said. We were just blessed at that hour, most people were home, rather than at work, out to dinner or on the road. Miss Turgeon point, there was also a sense of vigilance. In the days before that, if you turned your TV on that night, you saw that severe weather was happening around the state, she said. People paid attention downriver from Tulsa, evacuations have been ordered in Arkansas. In Arkansas, forecasters have warned residents to expect record flooding along the Arkansas River, particularly in the western part of the state, as water rushes in from tributaries in Oklahoma and Kansas. In Fort Smith, Officials have closed Riverfront Park, which abuts the river, and on Thursday, the Jefferson County Sheriff's Office issued a mandatory evacuation order for several communities ahead of predicted flooding there. In spite of warnings, we have had numerous residents remain within the areas we know all too well that are affected by flooding, Sheriff Lafayette Woods Jr. said in the evacuation order. Again, we sp the Arkansas portion of the river is expected to swell well above flood stage level during the next several days as officials in Oklahoma and other places upstream release water into the river from lakes that have reached capacity. Julie Bossman reported from Jefferson City, and Timothy Williams from New York. Reporting was con- Fuckin' up, open the park,